Well, the um, the song those days in Birmingham really is about that, and uh, actually on the CD, uh, when you open it up, there's a photograph of my bass in there, my original <laughs> bass, and uh, but. Love it. And it's floating in the sky, looking at the stars behind me. But um, I, um, I was on stage and one day waiting to go on, which you do, and before you know, the audience is out there and everything else. And I was looking at all these equipment on stage and the lighting and the crew and how many people we've got and the trucks and the buses. And uh, I drifted back to my school days and where it all began. And um, uh, the school I went to, just not far away, about 200 yards away, there was a, 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 a coffee bar. We called it a cafe. Because we, not, yeah, cafe, you know, but we, we, yeah, so, and it was Eddie's, Eddie's Cafe in Birmingham. And uh, he had a rock on the jukebox playing 45 records. Now, I'd never seen a 45 record, because in England in those days, we had 78s, we didn't have 45s. And this jukebox was there, and I, I was mesmerized by it. So every lunchtime, when everyone was doing the homework or whatever I was doing, I was in the cafe with my, you know, coin, dropping the coin in the slot, and listening to the latest record by Gene Vincent or Buddy Holly or Eddie Cochran. And uh, this music used to pound out of this jukebox because it had a 12-inch bass speaker. And I suddenly realised that was the part that I really liked, the driving force uh, behind the songs. And I didn't know what it was, but it was the bottom end. And then I started to study left-hand booby piano from people like Jerry Lee Lewis and Little Richard. And I suddenly realised that's what I really wanted to do. And there was no bass guitars in Birmingham. I didn't even know what a bass guitar was. And so I used to play all the bottom end, what the bass was playing, on the bottom four stringers, strings of my uh, guitar, and that's Ray and I used to play together, and I'll be going do, 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 on, on the guitar. And, um, and then one day I, I'm walking through uh, the middle of Birmingham, I'm 16 years of age, and I walk down, and there's a music instrument shop, and in the front it has a big sign set, straight from America, and there was this precision bass and a sunburst precision bass and I was like in a trance <laughs> I told, this, this, is, this, is, this is what I need <laughs> so I remember running, getting on the tram in those days, we didn't have buses, we had trams and I went trammed all the way home to my mum and dad's house and said to my father, Dad, you've got to help me out. Quick, with me now, back on the tram. Oh. So we went straight back to the uh, music instrument store and uh, I convinced my father to help me buy it. Well, <laughs> you know the word help. <laughs> so, uh, and I bought that guitar, uh, the bass, and I, I took it home and... Uh, First thing I did was stood in the back garden of my house with the photograph, and that's on the sleeve as well. We'd be we, we playing the bass, and there's another photograph of me which was taken just recently with the same bass playing away. Because that bass has played on nearly every song I've ever recorded. You know, nights, Tuesday afternoon, singer in a rock and roll band, ride my seats, or nearly everything. And uh, it's just been, you know, probably my greatest friend to keep with me, you know, and, uh, and that all, was all part of why I came into bass, it's just that bottoming, driving, driving pull, part of rock and roll, that, uh, even if it's a ballad, it doesn't matter, it's just what drives mm -hmm. the song around. Is, uh, <laughs> so this is the same bass that you uh, took to that benefit a year or two ago that you were telling me about? Um, oh. <laughs> this is, uh, he goes. He goes. He goes. Sal, I've got a. I've got a story for you. If you want, I provide a news service to radio stations all across the country. He goes. I've got a, a good story for you. You yeah. got to tell him this story. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, uh, great well, I, mean, I, I can set it up if you want. Yeah. Uh, great friend of mine, Kenny Jones, 
uh, is not too well, and uh, he was put to, his wife was putting a um, charity event together, and they have a little club where they live, and uh, his wife said, "Would I come and play for this charity?" Uh, and for Kenny, I said, "Yeah," and I thought it was a little club, you know, smaller than this. You know. And then, as he got closer and closer, I realised it was a huge benefit going to be played in front of like 8,000 people, whatever, and the who were topping the bill. <laughs> so I'm there, I've got my base and, you know, everything, and I thought, oh, okay, yeah, all right. And so uh, I told them what songs I wanted to do, and then on the day, um, I thought, okay, now, you have to remember, uh, um, I'm not on the road, so my guitar technician is up with me. Uh, so I think, now what do I need a, beside a bass? Or I need uh, some strings in case you get dry. Oh, I'm going to get a tuner. Yeah, I need a tuner. And uh, it was amazing, I hadn't done this for years. You know. So uh, and then I thought, well, okay, it's already now, I'm ready. Yeah, the bass is, yep, yeah, it's I'm absolutely, everything's ready. Okay, get the car out. Get the car out, I'm going down to the concert now, I'm ready. I'll psych myself up, I'm going to stand in front on my own with this, you know, backing band and everything else. I open the lid of the, the boot of my car, and the bass doesn't fit. <laughs> the boot's too small. And I'm looking, oh, what am I going to do? I'll put, I'll put the, the bass guitar and the case of it inside. Uh -huh. It won't go inside. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I'm going to, now I'm starting to panic. <laughs> you know, and I've still got like 20 miles to drive. You know. <laughs> and so I get there and I thought, where am I going? I know. I, I thought, I'll take it out of, the bait, out of the case. So I took the base out of the case. I thought, well, I can't walk around with space. <laughs> so there was an old rug in the garage. <laughs> So I wrapped the bass up. Oh my room. god. And now it just about oh fits my god. in the trunk of the car. <laughs> I'm happy now I'm away. <laughs> so I, I get down to the, the venue, and of course, there's thousands of people, and like, and every band on has got their own roadies, their own tents. <laughs> and there's me walking. <laughs> Home with the dirty <laughs> and the first person that sees me, who knows, is Glyn Jones. Glyn Jones is probably the greatest record producer in the world. He said, John, what on earth are you doing? He said, what's underneath that? I went, on my face. <laughs> and of course, in my pockets, I stuffed all the guitars. <laughs> that looks like spaghetti coming out. <laughs> anyway, all ended as well. Yeah.